I'm going to talk about neurofeedback and the potential it has for addiction treatment. First, I'm going to talk a little about neurofeedback in general. Neurofeedback uses a non-invasive, non-drug-based technique to identify and repair the structural dysregulation that underlies the expressions um, of symptoms of various conditions. And neurofeedback uses operant conditioning um, to promote self-regulation of abnormal brain activity. So the typical neurofeedback session starts with electrodes being placed on the patient's head. And these electrodes measure neuronal activity through the electrical impu impulses that are produced from active neurons. Then this um, data is sent to software, which analyzes the brain wave, it wave data and pinpoints abnormalities. Then this data is converted it, um, into a media display, which is in the feedback portion of the session. Um, which is often in the form of a video game and it's fed back to the patient. And the video game is programmed to respond to the brain control of the patient. And this goes into the regulation stage where clients receive feedback through their performance in the game and they become more aware and gain greater, gain greater control of their um, brain activity. And throughout the whole sessions, practitioners provide instructions and alterations to help regulate brain activity to appropriate levels. Next, I'm gonna talk a little about, bit about brain waves um, to help understand the science behind neurofeedback. Brain waves um, are divided into alpha, delta, theta, SMR, and beta waves based on their frequency. And different brainwave activity involves different types of brainwaves, as some are excitatory and some are inhibitory. Therefore, inappropriate brainwave activity may lead to overexcitatory, like fidgeting, agitation, or underexcitatory, like drowsiness, lack of, or lack of concentration behavior. Um, the electrical activity of individuals with substance dependence is often characterized by changes in the alpha, beta, and theta regions. For example, alcoholic patients often present with changes in the beta and alpha bandwidths, while cocaine addicted patients often show increased beta, delta, and frontal alpha activity. So um, by addressing the structural changes of addiction through neurofeedback, the manif manifestation of symptoms that are attributed to addiction tend to improve. There are several treatment protocols that focus on different brain waves or patterns of electrical activity, and specific training protocols can be developed based on the areas of dysfunction. And the majority of the research with on neurofeedback for addiction treatment is focused on the alpha-theta biofeedback. And neuro, neurofeedback is provided, proven to be beneficial um, often when used in combination with other treatment modalities. And there are several different theories to exist that exist to explain the mechanisms that underlie neurofeedback therapy and um, it as a therapeutic option for addiction. Um, and here's three of them that I'm going to outline. Scott et al. in, in 2005 um, attributes the efficacy of the alpha-theta protocol to its ability to heighten subjects um, abilities to tolerate stress and stressful experiences. Um, and they suggest that neurofeedback regulates, the, re regulates reward pathways, which are um, un dysregulated with addiction and allow for feelings of calm and satisfaction. Meanwhile, um, White et al. in 20, 2009 hypothesized that the alpha-theta protocol increases consciousness and self-reflection, which induces a change in patients' relationship with themselves and their experiences, um, which helps them maintain recovery. And finally, Rostami et al. in 2015 um, believes that alpha-theta protocols enables past experiences and emotions to be re revisited, revisited and thus reevaluated and processed, um, which helps um, in growth and recovery from addiction. And here's some results of 
neurofeedback treatment in combination with other treatment mod modalities. Um, studies have shown that neurofeedback helps with re reducing relapse rates and um, abstinence rates. As you can see, one study showed um, a 60% abstinence rate. They help with ha um, help increase rates of treatment retention, help decrease substance craving and withdrawal symptoms, and as well has been shown to improve overall mental health, including stress levels, depression, and PTSD. So now I'm gonna talk about a few studies that I found that I've shown to demonstrate the effectiveness of neurofeedback. The first study is Scott et al., um, published in 2005, and it was a study done by UCLA um, that examined the effects of neurofeedback on patients in an inpatient substance abuse program. And this was looked at um, a combination of neurofeedback and a 12-step program. And it was shown that this combined treatment protocol improved abstinence rates one year into recovery and that it assisted in cortex activation, helping improve these abstinence levels um, by, resist by deterring resistance to treatment and recovery. And the second study um, was very similar to the previous one, but um, in that neurofeedback was used in combination with standard inpatient care, and it was shown to be effective in recovery from cocaine dependence. And the implementation, implementation of this standard treatment protocol with the neurofeedback helped to similar, similarly reduce relapse rates, decrease depression, anxiety, and increase treatment retention. And the last study I'm gonna talk about was published in 2013. And um, the multimodal uh, tr treatment approach has been, the study shows that the multimodal treatment approach has been proven effective for opioid dependent patients using neurofeedback and pharmacotherapy. Um, this study showed that, um, showed patients improve, had improved depression, positive outlook, drug craving, general mental health, and somatic symptoms um, when treated in combination with, with meds and neurofeedback. And that's all I have for today. Thank you.